Michael. Why not? Happy Halloween. No, happy Halloween, everyone. Welcome to Two Guys and Some Horror, a very special Halloween episode where we talk about the movie, the legend, the series, Halloween. And today it's Halloween 4. And joined with me today, as every day we do a special Two Guys and Two Horror episode, is my friend Curtis. Curtis, how are you doing, my friend? Doing good. Why did we pick this one? I can't remember why we picked this I, one out of all of the Halloween movies to watch for Halloween. I think we... Okay, so this is the, the one of the ones I've never seen. And this is the one w that's probably the biggest outcast out of all of the Halloween movies. Well, I haven't seen the fifth one, so that one might be worse. But this is the one that doesn't have Laurie Strode. And it just tries to run off of Dr. Loomis. Yeah. Basically, this is um, so there's someone on Twitter put together like a really cool and I'll throw the graphic up on the video while I'm talking about it. But yeah. they they put together a really nice breakdown of all of the Halloween franchise and the different sagas that you get. Very similar to how they do like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. Um, right. So so what they did was they showed like one and two and then four, five and six are the Loomis saga is what they consider it. And it's basically right. Loomis's story trying to, you know, uh, stop Michael. This is that, like, return, I guess, after they dipped away for a minute, which we'll talk more about. Yeah, what, Season of the Witch, yeah. Which just, we saw last year. Check out that episode. Yeah, check out that episode. That's a fun episode. I, I love that movie. I really love that movie. Um, yeah, you do. But, like, I, I remembered liking this movie a lot more than watching it last night. Um, I think... Maybe I've just seen it too much now, or like it's just lost its kind of fun for me. I don't know. It's tough. Well, we've seen so many movies like this that it's kind of hard to. I don't know. Like you might be going through the motions with with slasher flicks right now. That might be the case. Yeah. Maybe not. We can we can get into the therapy of it later. Uh, we'll have you on in the bench and tell me your feelings. Perfect. Tell me how you really feel. But I think the one thing. Like before we kind of get into, I guess, going back, let's talk about the production a little bit because this was released on October twenty first, the season of Halloween, of course, or as people are, as media is trying to push right now, spooky season, which is, come on, guys, whatever, uh, nineteen eighty eight. So I was I was a young babe when this movie came out, and uh, it was filmed primarily in Utah, which is where they they have placed Haddonfield, apparently not technically there but filmed there pretty consistently. So the budget of this film was about $5 million. An opening week weekend, they, they made an estimated, uh, and I'm rounding up here, about $7 million. It's actually like a bit more like 6.8. And the gross is about $17.8 million. So a pretty successful film. Uh, but out of all the Halloween movies I have seen, this is probably the driest, the, the one where they just kind of threw things out there and like, well, Michael Myers is back. Halloween 3 was, was not as good of a film as we thought it would be. So let's bring Michael back. Uh, uh, we can't get uh, Jamie Lee Curtis back for this film for some reason. So let's – let's she had a daughter. Here's her daughter. It's been this many years. Dr. Loomis is, is in the film still. Great. Wonderful. Myers out of the hospital. He's, he's going to go on a killing rampage. Ship it. Basically. I mean, I mean, the background is pretty obvious. You know, you release Halloween 3 Season of the Witch with no Michael Myers, and it doesn't have as good of a you know response as you were expecting. I mean, the idea right. the idea with the Halloween franchise from John Carpenter and Deborah Hill was not just about Michael Myers. It was a it was a bigger, larger anthology idea that they had, and it just because of the way the studio wanted to portray it, it didn't pan out, especially with Mustafa Akkad. Uh, and his ideology behind how he wanted it to work, there just never was a really clear connection between all of them. So, um, you, yeah, I can't really. You could tell John Carpenter's vision was not in this film. Oh this no, this was not he... John Carpenter's magic. So um, Carpenter and Deborah Hill wrote. They actually wrote a story for Halloween Four that made to him to to Carpenter like it made more sense of how to bring Myers back into it, and it was more of a spirit right. like a ghost. So that was his idea. There is is to have um like a a spirit or a specter of some sort being myers is is um 
by <laughs> Jesus Christ. We just got visited by uh by Curtis's daughter. It, it's yeah. adorable. It's adorable. So let's kind of if you if you whatever you do, man. It, I I think we could let let her let our folks know that you know we are in COVID quarantine too. But yeah, yeah. Kind of going back to just <laughs> she basically funny. she basically uh, kicked the door in looking for the Nintendo Switch charger, which I always leave I always leave it in the same spot because when I'm working from home she may come and grab it as well. And she's like standing there, she's holding it in her hands, and she's like looking at me, looking at the wall, looking at me, and it's like that weird, awkward, like, she wants to ask me something, but I'm not really sure what she's trying to ask me. And I'm trying to, like, trying to finish my thought about how John Carpenter basically didn't want to be a part of it anymore. So him and Deborah Hill sold the rights to Akkad. And that, so right. now Mustafa Akkad, if you look, every film following um halloween 3 it's purely him he is the main uh man behind the scenes working on all that i Um, I gotta be honest man like i i it shows that this this changed hand severely and the direction is not even close to being as good as the first film the second movie like i don't even like the second movie and i'm kind of glad and i've said this before i'm really glad they rebooted everything with the most recent halloween film which i feel is a true sequel compared to the second one where hey let's bring dr john loomis back even though he's obviously dead in the first film i hate it i I hate it when studios do that and it's done too much don't if you're gonna kill someone off please don't bring them back well so loomis loomis doesn't die in the first one loomis shoots myers out of the window he falls to the ground and then myers disappears the body disappears and you end with laurie and loomis standing there looking at basically where they no basically where they thought myers would be in two loomis is in the room when michael myers lights on fire and blows up that's the one where we all assume loomis is gone oh right that's why i assumed he died he died in the second one that's why and then the third one they bring him well the fourth one he's just back basically they decided to bring him back on his face yeah and that that's a whole can of worms so that's (laughs) <laughs> this that's why this problem is such a problem then like that's even worse everything else on this film i'm not a fan of no offense to like the acting or the i it just it did not feel real to me at the very beginning like uh jamie lloyd um did not was not a fan who is played by uh daniel the danielle know, harris yes daniel harris yeah which no offense miss miss harris just your child acting was not on point. It this was, was her first feeling. film, and I can't. I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm. I can't. It's. I don't know. I guess I, it's on par. Yeah, I guess that's what I was going to say for child acting. Yeah, but you know, child acting came quite a long way in nineteen the nineteen eighties. Like, look at the kid who played Elliot in ET. Like, we're not. We're not going to have to get Shirley Temple level acting at this point and uh, i guess it might maybe like five million dollars is not a small budget especially not for the 1980s no it's it's pretty big and in my in my opinion they um the way that they introduce the characters seems Mm -hmm. very haphazard as well like there's no real jamie lee's character laurie had a kid that kid then got shipped over to a different family and adopted because why Lori didn't die. Right. They don't say Lori died. They just they never say, mentioned Lori at all. No, just they the shoebox of pictures. Yeah. I mean, that's all we get um, is a shoebox of pictures, a couple of clippings, and it's like your kid clearly knows you, but you don't want anything to do. Like, I just, it's so, it's very weird to me. It's, um, you know, I can't, I can't they just it. pulled things out of, out of everywhere. They're just like, we're going to make another Michael Myers film. Whatever happened, Michael Myers is, he's back. And he's boring, and he's basically Jason. Uh, he's Jason now. This is where the transformation from him being a man, being Michael Myers, turns into more than that. He's now more than human. He's now basically a real boogeyman or a zombie, as he he cannot die at all. Uh, he gets shot several times, and he's just kind of standing there with all the bullet buffets through him. And then he comes back in the sequel. And then he comes back again, and he's, like, super strong. Like, dude, when he lifts that guy up one-handed with a shotgun, just kind of stabs him and picks him up, I'm like, this is Friday the 13th now. This is no longer Halloween. Well, I mean, he does that in the first film, too, with uh, the poor boyfriend uh, in the kitchen. You know, he he stabs him with the butcher knife and then lifts him straight up uh, and then Uh, pins him to a wall, even. 
if I remember right. Like um, that's true. I don't know the the whole thing with Myers, and I'm not discounting his similarities to Jason. Obviously, these are two giant franchises that are fighting each other at this time. They have to try and outdo one another. That makes perfect sense. So the the similarities are going to be there. No problem with that. Um, Jason's part- kind of been an undead creature for a while at they've this made point. it this very clear in that film correct yeah he he's already he's already zombie like the the girl with the telekinetic powers or telepath telepathy she's already appeared she's made her debut like they've already crossed the bridge with the supernatural and and friday the 13th mm-hmm. with with halloween it's we're not there until this film this is where we get to it because the main character's having visions dude of when michael myers went crazy wearing a clown costume Right. Um, like they don't really explain what that is, but they want you to make that kind of connection there. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's I mean, that was their goal with this film. Yeah, totally. They, they give you a little bit of background. And the only explanation for what Michael Myers is, is that he's evil incarnate by a raving lunatic who is Dr. Loomis. And like I said, this movie is more about Loomis and his fight yeah. than it is about Myers at all. It's really just a way to bring Myers back to keep the franchise moving forward and to tell more of a story from Loomis's perspective, which I don't I don't dislike. I like Donald Pleasance. He's a he's a great actor and he's been in a lot of things with John Carpenter, right? So you got Escape yes. from New York is another one that I love. And I feel like he's pretty yeah, good. I I don't dislike his acting. I just think that there are points where his his emoting wasn't appropriate, like the very end where he's like, No, no over the top a little bit like a little forced i want no to talk about the end which is but something we we'll, don't normally do a lot but because this movie it, yeah. doesn't have a ton of crap really to talk about throughout it um i th- i think the end is probably i think the best part in my opinion this is yeah. to me that's where the movie i wish the movie would have started with that and then we would have had a real in a sense a real reboot or a real restart to, to yeah, kind they, of amplifying this they could have cut this out into like a 15 minute this whole movie could have been a 15 minute introduction for the fifth movie which it is it, it is yeah no that's it exactly is. what it is so, so you don't even of... need to watch this film you don't even need to watch this one this is no. the movie that you can completely miss and be 100 percent fine because they give you an entire recap in the next film maybe um, watch the last 15 minutes right maybe i think it's worth it yeah, I I like the we'll get an introduction to Jamie who's boring. She's just a completely boring protagonist child. We get introduced to her her foster big sister or or whatever that is. Yeah, Rachel who doesn't even want to be around. Rachel doesn't even like her. Rachel's boyfriend's cheating on her. And uh, of course, he dies. The girl he's cheating on with dies because, you know, divine retribution. Michael Myers is going to kill everyone who's a bad person. It's they're like this is a bad person, so it's okay that they die, like a lot of horror movies do, and uh, you know, great, great film, very simple, very basic slasher, no, nothing really added to it. No, nothing, very nothing generic. added. I think if anything, it, it's this film is the dip that you expect in a long running franchise, very similar to the telekinesis uh, Jason film um with the girl right who has like the psychic powers and all that like that's also one of the franchise films for friday the 13th that i'm not as big of a fan of um yeah as a standalone film it works as a part of a giant series i like it less this is one of the ones where i like it less there's moments i think where it really stands out like a lot of the loomis scenes are really good um well, he's but, at the, the uh, precinct for sure when he's like, I've seen this many bodies, this, this, this. Take me seriously, goddammit. And the cop's like, whoa, 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 take it easy. Check it out. Yeah, I mean, I... And then Michael proceeds to murder all the cops. At least... Great. <laughs> that's the thing. At least the sheriff took him seriously in this one, whereas in the first one, all we kept getting was, you know, this must be a joke. Let's drive around together and look. Um, is it? It's not just me, too. The sheriff is the same one as in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The same guy? The same cop, yeah. Uh, no, it's not the same guy. It's not the same actor, but he sounds so much the same, and he's got the <laughs> same curly hair. They're very similar in my eyes. 
It's uh, one of them's I can an see... asshole. The other one's just kind of an asshole. I can see the similarities. Maybe after this yeah. whole Meyer shit, he got pissed off, went to retire in a nice small town, and then that's when we get killer clowns. He's just tired of their shit. Um, <sighs> uh, okay, so the end of the movie, real quick. I don't want you to d- detract me. You you try to you try to get me off my my game there for Let's a talk second. Talk about it. All right, so everyone goes home. Everything's fine. Everyone goes home. And then the mom is going to run Jamie a bath uh, to help her relax after a long Halloween night uh, with all the drama that went on. As the mom's drawing the bath, we see uh, first-person perspective, which is a beautiful shot of the clown mask going back on. Um, And then we see that character, because you don't know who it is actually wearing the mask, that character then walks to the bathroom where the water's being drawn, and it cuts away, and you hear screaming and slashing. And then up the stairs runs the sheriff, or Dr. Loomis first, and then that's when you get the poor delivery of a line, no, no, God, no, no, and you get the sheriff coming up also. And they, it, it's weird, they cut them to slow motion, I think, to prolong that scene. The audio plays at normal speed, but the scene itself is is slow mode. Um and then you see Jamie come out from around the corner, completely bloody mess in the clown costume, very similar to the one that Michael wore in the original film uh, with a pair of scissors instead of a butcher knife. Now, I think for me, the big reason why this scene is so, I don't know, prolific in some ways is that you don't see that coming the entire time you're watching this movie. Um, the first time I watched this, I did not expect that. Not at all. Um, I don't know many people who guess this ending when they watch this film for the first time. I really don't know many. Yeah. And I think that's no, a no. really cool, I don't know, way to kind Let's... of kickstart and restart this franchise. I, they, t- they try to set it up to have a new killer every time the evil is or something like that is, is killed off. So it gets a new host pretty much because they showed the clown costume of Michael in his where he started out and the girls wearing the same costume. And then she kills, and then you see her holding the weapon and the blood, and she's breathing like Myers does, going, mm-hmm. <laughs> just staring at them. And he's like, pure evil. And then he goes, no, no, no. Oh, oh my goodness. And then the other cops run and take the gun away. And they all look yeah. up passionately as she just stands there, like breathing heavily with scissors. Uh, over the top for me. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a good twist that, you know, they set it up. They had all this, this talk in the very beginning for the evil to give it some sort of, uh, background and this, this film's okay. It's an okay slasher. I have nothing else to say about it other than it's an okay slasher and it, I don't ever want to watch it really on my own again. The only time I watch this one now that I think about it is when I do our, franchise watches during the month of october yeah. which is you know today's halloween so of course i put halloween as our um halloween franchise watch day and sadly i will be watching this again after we get done um you know with the best one in my opinion uh season of the witch so um no i, I, I feel I bad like season of the witch is a, is a different movie it is, I, uh, and that's I the cool thing to... about the saga, right? So, like, the saga yeah. shows uh, Halloween and then Season of the Witch. That's one storyline. You don't have to watch two, which sucks, and you don't have to watch any of the other garbage after if you don't want to. You get Halloween, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Call it good. That could be your franchise watch. Dude, hearing you say Halloween 2 sucks is so relieving for me. Cause, it's like, just not good. Because, like, you love everything. <laughs> yeah, you, you love everything, and, like... Compared to the the most recent Halloween film is probably that's I liked it I liked it I enjoyed watching it I enjoyed like Michael trying he's he's an actual person he's but he's pushing shit over like they're in the safe house and he's like all right I found out where it is mm-hmm. he's wily he's still alive I remember I went we I that. took my mom on a um on a like a, a mother son date we actually went and saw Halloween Kills back in 2018 when it came out uh, and that was a lot of fun I mean that movie. Her and I both agree that is a much better sequel to uh, the, the original Halloween film. Of course, she loves Jamie Lee. So for her, she doesn't mind, too. It doesn't bother her as much as it bothers me. But, man, it just felt like such a rinse and repeat film. That's why I say it sucks. It's 
Um, I will never say that I hate a movie just because I can always find something good from a movie, but I don't go out of my way to watch Halloween 2. I watch Halloween. I watch Halloween 3. I will go watch um, H2O, not Resurrection. I'm not as much of a fan of Resurrection. Um, Halloween 6 is a lot of fun because I get Paul Rudd and you get Tommy Doyle's perspective, like what's happening in the world with Michael Myers with Tommy Doyle. So that's really cool. And then I like Rob Zombie's remake, the first one. Um, I like, and when I say I like it, it's not like it's a good movie to me. I like everything after uh, Loomis locks up Myers. I absolutely dislike the entire why does he do what he does. The redneck trailer family garbage to me is just not, it doesn't appeal to me. It's not my no. not my cup of tea. And then Halloween 2 why. remake was pff, blow it out of the water, it doesn't exist. Dude, 100%. Bring back Jamie Lee Curtis. Have her actually act. Get rid of all the stupid bullshit they pulled out of their ass. Just resolve it. Make everything great. I loved it. Um, really personalized Laurie Strode for us. Yes, um, I agree. I'm going to have to say, though, that this is where Michael Myers and Jason completely connect. And had they never made this film, had they stopped it too... Had they moved on to talk about Michael Myers being a ghost or whatever else, whatever they Rob, not Rob Zombie, uh, Mr. John Carpenter was thinking, like maybe that would have been better. I don't know, but not a fan of this movie. Uh, I don't. This makes me kind of scared to watch the fifth one. I'm worried that it might be worse. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say it's we... worse. I wouldn't say it's worse. Okay. There, I mean, the problem is four and five to me are on the same level. They really tried hard with the Jamie storyline. I think five to me has some funner moments, <clears throat> especially with Tina. A lot of people don't like Tina. I like Tina. Um, I thought she was a real fun character because we yeah. get. So Rachel comes back. Yeah. Rachel comes back because she doesn't die. Um, Rachel comes back for five. Um, and now Jamie's living under Dr. Loomis's ward in the hospital, the children's hospital or whatever. So five yeah, gets geez. a little crazier. She has way more um, connection with Myers in that one. And this one, they, they start it, right? They see We see yeah. it start. Five gets a whole nother level of crazy, which I think is what redeems it. Um, but you know what? We'll have, to, we'll have to save it and find out uh, maybe next year. Maybe that's the one that we'll do. Yeah, for I, I, think, I think waiting an entire year to watch the next movie is plenty of time for me. Well, if you're if I'm, you're doing what yeah. we're what I'm doing, you're watching all of them today. <laughs> oh, there's there's a, I love you, man, but I don't have the time nor the patience for that. <laughs> uh, I I need to take my Halloween one step at a time, and the best of Michael Myers is on Dead by Daylight, except for when he gets hit by a pallet and turns into a little bitch. I mean, shirtless Myers is best Myers. So, oh, dude, they need to release that skin. He's so buff looking. Mm. What a I'd, snack. I'd motor about that. Go, rah, 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 rah. So Kill question me, for Daddy you. Hulu. Did you What's up? did you catch the scene where they screwed up the mask? Where they screwed up the mask? No, yeah. I didn't. So in the school, when Myers is chasing Jamie through the school, through the classrooms, um, there's the scene where Loomis gets thrown out the window. And you can see Myers. He's actually wearing a mask. It's It's the blonde haired Myers, which is the route that they were going to go initially. Um, and they filmed, they actually shot some scenes with that mask and they had to go back and reshoot because they realized brown hair Myers was the better Myers, not blonde hair Myers. Yeah. They did a lot of weird things with that mask. Um, it gave it more emotion, uh, in this film, which is also kind of weird. You know, they didn't go with the traditional, uh, Myers mask that was worn in the first film. A, yeah, this one they lost weird. it. You know, it went to, I think it went with. Uh, the original actor who played Myers, check me, you know, double check that. Don't take my word for it. But I thought that's how it went. He kept it. They filmed Halloween 2, didn't use that same mask. And then they couldn't get it for, like, they wanted to bring it back for 4, but they couldn't. So they tried to remake that same style of Myers mask by then. It's 10 years later. Yeah. I mean, you're going to you're going to try and I they just, I just feel like each time you see this movie progress now in the franchise the mask gets worse. Um well, five know, and is... also Daniel so Daniel Harris also sold her cl clown costume as that, well. That that was a really yeah. interesting piece cuz she wore it for trick or treat Joe Bob said 
And then there's yeah. another um, article that, yeah, that you're referencing that we talked about. And she did end up selling it to a fan after she had worn it for, for trick or treating that year, which is crazy. Uh, stuff I'm like that just cracks me money up. Out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I enjoyed the movie and, uh, term some of the stuff i really liked like we get a lot of stereotypes earl shows up whenever there's an earl with a posse and comes up to the sheriff you know shit's about to go down because earl shows up he talks to the sheriff how many fucking movies have an earl in every town and he's generally a troublemaker with the sheriff or or just a, an all-around badass with guns right you get earl, earl from earl Tremors. In this film <laughs> Earl, well, this this Earl like was was basically the the actual hero of the film. He he saves the day against Myers with his posse, and they pew pew him, and they uh, they also they pew shoot pew him. that random guy in the bush. That's right. It wasn't him though. It was his it was his his idiot underling who did that. And you Earl's idiot! Like, you said you, you saw idiot. him in the bush. You said you saw him in the bush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the everybody wearing the Michael Myers masks in Haddonfield, like. Come on, dude. Well, I mean, you think it's been 10 years. I mean, I guess it's a joke yeah, to them now because they didn't live it. Yeah, but how do they know what mask he was wearing and how how is everybody wearing the same mask? That's just crazy to me. Well, now and it's like, just the sold guns at the have, store. The cops have guns out and they're wearing these costumes around them. Yeah. They're obviously on edge. Why would you do that? Why would you even tempt it? Yeah. Yeah, as as for funny. the mask, I mean, that's where Myers picks up his mask. He first runs into Jamie at the costume shop where Brady right. works. And uh, so they clearly sell the mask. They made a point to show that, at least. Right. Um, and that's why they're lower quality masks, because he picks up a new one. Because they're just at the thrift store. Uh, Brady, yeah. fun fact about Brady, he's actually from a couple of films um, that I like. One in particular we'll be talking about in the future so buffy the vampire slayer he's one of the van one of the kids that gets turned into a vampire and ends up uh going and playing basketball against him buffy trips him on the court that scene so that that's another movie brady's in fun fact as we go um are we ready for fun facts i mean i don't have much else about this i mean earl is basically it for me every movie has to have its earl so let's let's talk, I guess. Let's hit some fun facts and trivia. So Alan McElroy wrote this script in 11 days. The reason why that's important isn't because of how fast he wrote it. It's because he beat the strike by mere hours. So he almost didn't have it done before the strike went into effect. That's crazy to think about when you're talking about revitalizing a franchise and that there's, you know, five million dollars on the line potentially that you're that you're willing to risk. Um trying to get a script finished in you know the 11th hour there um let's see another fun one so jamie's name originally in the script was going to be Brittany or Brittany lloyd but they decided to change it in homage to jamie lee curtis which is the actress who played laurie um so that's kind of neat uh let's I, see. I heard that so george p wilbur the guy who played uh, michael myers uh-huh. they actually put shoulder pads like hockey pads underneath his jumpsuit to make him more imposing uh they didn't do this with don shanks though in the fifth one who, who's actually a big boy this one you can kind of tell that there's padding if you yeah. look at him closely because he's not as imposing as other big daddy myers no someone on twitter tweeted a picture of halloween fours myers and they go those are some nice shoulder pads you got there sweetheart <laughs> yeah so the uh, girl, Lindsay, who drove Rachel and Jamie to that discount mart, whenever she was saying, we can either go get ice cream or we can go to the discount mart, uh, later was going right. to be revealed to be Lindsay Wallace from original Halloween 1978. She was meant to have a much bigger role in the film as Rachel's friend, who's going to help her babysit Jamie, but that all got cut out for budget reasons and um, probably just got left on a cutting room floor, any scenes that may have been filmed. Because then there was the third boy uh, who was going to hang out with Brady and Wade in the drugstore. You know, the one with the glasses who was going to hit on Kelly. So, like, that whole idea was he was going to be Tommy Doyle. So they were going to loop both characters back in, which kind of, in my opinion, might have been a little bit better, or a little bit cooler, but didn't pan out, unfortunately. I hate that I'm mask that you I... just sent me. <laughs> the fifth one. 
Uh, I don't know. They've had quite a few masks, and I think the yeah. best one is the one in the most recent film. I think they um, did a really good job aging, like making the mask look like it sat and aged for a very long time. So, I, you know, the only Halloween films I saw prior to, you know, starting this podcast were originally the first, second, and then H2O. And I think H2O's mask is one of the dumbest ones. Yeah. It looks really, really fucking goofy. Yeah, it looks like a 2000 model. Like a 2000 3D model in a video game is what it looks like. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it looks really goofy. I thought H2 I saw H2O like before I saw the first Halloween, and you know like Jamie Lee Curtis has an alcoholism problem in that mask. Yeah. After watching it back then, now I'm like, okay, I, I might need to add these stop. to the um you know to the YouTube video so that way the listeners yeah. slash viewers so can if check you're watching it out. this on. If you're listening to this, Google these, Google like each, each movie's Michael Myers and yeah. just see like how bad some of these masks look in comparison to the original. They're pretty awful. Uh, I think the first, first film's mask is the best. I think the last, that and the new one, the, the last one that they did was really nice. Um, yeah, I agree. But it doesn't, nice I mean, to me, the first looking. one will always be Myers, you know, the original, yeah. William Shatner mask they grabbed out of a budget store real quick because they were just there. They happened to be there and they thought a mask would be more menacing. It just, it worked so well. Like, um, yeah. And now you see like a lot of people, um, will go out and buy a Myers mask. Like I have a Myers mask actually. Um, I should be Is wearing it, a good it one? for this episode. It's not, Here, you know, what? I'm going to go grab it. I'll edit this. Go I'll grab clean it. this up. Yeah edited it out he's not gonna edit out this song he's keeping this part in and i'm talking about the gerbils that went inside richard gear's butt what gerbils went inside richard gear's butt what gerbils entered his butt what 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 halloween official trailer halloween I actually got this mask when I was in Minnesota uh, for a sporting event. The wife and I last year took a took a trip, and at the mall, I went inside of Hot Topic for whatever reason, and this was on sale like for seven bucks or something. So I picked it up just to be funny. But yeah, um, that was a really cute song, by the way, about gerbils. You're welcome, Richard Gear. Uh... Yeah, but anyhow, we were talking about like all the masks and everything. But let me see. Yeah. Let put your raise yours up again. Sure. I'll see it. Show all the people what it looks like. Okay, it's a very beautiful mask. It's, uh, it's the one thing cheap. it's missing is the real hair. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. missing the hair, but otherwise I like it. Yeah, we'll it's get got some. These weird... We'll get some hair implants in there. It's got these weird like devil horn pieces of the hair. I don't yeah. know if you can really. See. Yeah, like I see this. what you're talking about. Those little dangly boobs. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. I don't know because he always has. Texture. I mean, he he has nice textured hair in H2O though, nice and nice and cut and clean. I think. Yeah, I think Jason has a better ensemble of masks. He does, and better continuity as well when it comes to his mask. Um, yeah, for sure. So the last little bit of, I guess, fun fact is um, this is the first film that they decided not to call him The Shape in. Right. Um, they moved away from that. He's just called Michael Myers. And in, whereas in the first film, even one, two and six, um, he called is him the boogeyman on the first one. The shape, though, is what he gets credited as. But you're right. Um, boogeyman. Are you? Are you afraid of the boogeyman? All right. Well, that's, you know, I think that's enough fun facts and trivia. I don't think there's anything that's really fun or facts factual about this movie. Just kidding. <laughs> I Doctor Loomis is really just sold on the uh, Michael Myers is evil incarnate in this film. He he sounds like the uh, the nun from Silent Night Deadly Night that he has Satan inside him at this point. 
And this is really the film where I'm like, Dr. Loomis, I don't like you. Because he, it's like he's so sold on the fact that this is an evil human being. Like, what if Dr. Loomis is the reason Michael Myers is a murderer and a serial killer? See, what if think, it's all his fault? I think part two does a great job of kind of bringing that up where the, the doctor could be the crazy one, too. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where maybe he like McBride did a great job in the writing there to kind of turn that around and, and make that known. Because that movie is a lot about mental health issues as well, not just yeah. a scary movie, but also it brings in like, what does everyone deal with when it comes to, you know, like Lori trying to get past it in her life, right? How do, how does a doctor handle not being able to be as good as Dr. Loomis and, you know, wanting to be like Dr. Loomis? And I mean, we'll get to that one, I think, eventually as well. What if um, uh, Myers was created by Loomis on purpose? I would have liked it if they went that route instead like dr loomis is the true wait do you not remember five or six i haven't seen five or six i guess you're gonna have to watch them now today i wish they did i wish they went that way and if they did then great i doubt they did though i doubt they um (laughs) i doubt they did uh this is very very easy to tell which direction they're going here and uh it's not a great one you've turned a great thing into a soap opera horror franchise which i'm not a fan of a little but a little bit (laughs) With that being said, let's move into what we've been doing lately. Um, I think we're going to start with you, Curtis. And, sure thing. Uh, yes. Yes. Yas, Queen. Go. Uh, so last night, um, I watched a movie called Deadly Friends. Um, it was just, yeah. it was referred to me by a good friend of mine, Will. Uh, shout out to Will. Him and I bought it on Amazon and then had some burgers and watched it. Uh, it it's pretty good. It's a Wes Craven film from 1986. Uh, nothing really like too crazy to write home about, but the, the best way to summarize it or kind of consolidate it is, um, think of like short circuit mixed with a little bit of maybe the Goonies mixed with a little bit of, uh, reanimator or even Frankenhooker. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good summarization. (laughs) Are you mouthing what I'm saying? I am. I am, and uh, the visual user or listeners don't get to get to see it, or uh, audio audio only <laughs> listeners don't get to see that. Clark Cast um, twenty twenty never. Check out our, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's not that funny. It was good. You don't need to. You don't need to go to our YouTube channel and check out this video so you hear our podcast twice. You don't need to do that at all. There's but no I love you guys. If you do do here. I There's no subliminal messaging. It's not there. Nothing there. Don't subscribe. Don't ring that bell. You'll never see it. You'll never know now. You'll miss out yeah, on it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Nobody, don't worry. Forget about it. What has Clark been up to this past week? Oh, my friend. My friend, what have I not been up to? I've been, life has been insane. Um, I've been playing a lot of Dark Souls 3. That's kind of where I've gone to replace most of my rest time. I, uh, I, I'm a big big rogue fan i like to play things that require a certain amount of skill and ability to adapt and overcome and if a game is difficult that provides me something to get good at so i like to i like to figure out boss patterns and do all that fun stuff and look at the lore and kind of understand where i am in the world and just have fun with stuff so that's where my energy is going right now aside from like trying to not play dead by daylight because that thing has taken away too much time from my life 700 hours of that game which is no small feat at all with i blame i blame myself for that i've owned that game for a year over a little over a year now and that has been the the absorber of my free time so now i'm moving away from that you know with all the other stuff i'm doing but i've only played like 20 hours of games for the past two weeks which is better than better than normal so give me props there you know doing good good i'm glad next month no video games next month november after after today after halloween guys you're gonna hear all about how i am completely sober from video games or watching movies aside from the ones we watch from this podcast you're gonna hear all about how that's going um self-improvement thumbs up clark gives this Two thumbs, way up. <laughs> Two waggle fingers. All right, well, I think it's All time right. to plug the social medias. Let's do it. So that is 
the number two guys horror pod at both Instagram and Twitter. And today is Halloween, so that means we will be live streaming Night of the Living Dead. So if you want to have that information, please check out our Twitter channel. It's going to be 10 a.m. today. Ooh, wow. It might already be out as you're listening to me. Oh, isn't that just so much fun? Check us out at Two Guys Horror Pod. That is the number Two Guys Horror Pod at Twitter. And uh, we will drop a link to uh, – I forgot what, what we're using, man. Uh, but there's going to be a link to the live stream. I think we're going to use our YouTube, yeah. We're going to live stream on YouTube. The movie is completely legal. Uh to stream since it is public domain so enjoy that with us you'll hear all the goofs and gaffs and laughs and just basically me saying a bunch of random shit and making fun of things while curtis talks about how much he loves the movie and gushes over every actor and every wonderful shot because the film is absolutely brilliant all right with that being said you know so if you want email us at two guys and some horror that is the word two guys and some horror gmail.com if you'd like to be a guest or if you'd like to mention a movie that you'd like to watch with us, send us a shout out and we'll talk with you. We'll figure it out. With that being said, man, I think that's everything we have. Uh, Curtis, do you have anything you want to say to our lovely listeners before we go? No, just thank you guys for listening. We're, you know, we're really happy to be able to do this and have a lot of fun with you guys. Um, I appreciate every listen. Um, and on our YouTube channel, you know, we are trying something new, so we'll see if that helps as well there. But for now, um, We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Come back. And with that, we have completed our our sexually transmitted disease of two guys and some horror. It has now been injected straight into the veins. Enjoy it.